I recently watched a video from Veritasium about how bicycles stay upright. A special bike was made for this video which allowed the handlebars to be limited in motion. As well as preventing the handlebars from being turned in one direction, the handlebars could also be locked entirely, so the rider could only go straight. But the bike was impossible to balance on in this case, even when just trying to go in a straight line. Other aspects of the bicycle's structure and physics are discussed in the video, but the main conclusion is that the steering is really important to being able to balance on a bicycle, or the bicycle itself being able to stay upright with no rider. Since watching that video, I've been thinking about other ways to make a bicycle steer. There's not really any need to make the design of the bicycle any more complicated, but I'll discuss some ideas for further development of the idea at the end. For now, I'm going to make a balancing bike robot which uses a wheel mounted perpendicular to the main drive wheel, so it can drive sideways to steer. Just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lulzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. So first of all we're going to deal with the back drive wheel which is basically a cup shape and that's got a bearing fitted in it and I've got a TPU tyre which stretches to go over it so we've got some traction with the ground for driving. So once that's fitted of course it rotates that way on the bearing and the end of the motor. And the motor is one of these Gimson Robotics motors which is 13.7 to 1. I've used these in projects before. It's got a 12mm keyed shaft on it and the whole thing fits into that back wheel and then the key shaft goes into the end of it where there's a grub screw and a captive M6 nut to hold it nice and tight. So that runs pretty well and the advantage of building it like this is that the motor is balanced in the middle so it doesn't stick out to one side and everything's balanced around where the tyre is. So that's fitted into the chassis and that's going to run backwards and forwards to drive along like the back wheel of a bike. To support the end of the motor though I've got another bearing in a bracket and that just fits on the end so that we're not just bending that motor around its other mounting bracket. Everything is screwed together with some small screws and that should complete the back wheel assembly. I've got a clamp there as well just to hold that motor in nice and tight. And you can see that's balanced fairly well around the back tyre with the motor bridged across it. So it doesn't stick out to one side and that also gives us clearance to steer by leaning. The front wheel is in fact made of some Omni wheels. These are pretty heavy duty ones I found on Amazon. So an Omni wheel will run like a normal wheel but it's also got little wheels around its circumference so that it can slide sideways. In our case it's going to slide backwards and forwards as the bike drives and rotate sideways to steer. I'm using two of these and I'm offsetting the wheels with a little hub in the middle so that the gap where there isn't a little wheel is filled in by the other one so that there is a wheel and we should get consistent traction and we shouldn't get stuck on the ground where the metal is if there's any lumps or bumps. A hub is attached to one side of that and screwed into the existing screw holes and that again has a captive nut on and a grub screw so we can attach it to the motor. On the other side I've got another hub and that's got some M8 studding in it, and again that's just screwed on with three M3 screws. To drive sideways, I've got another one of those motors that's exactly the same, with its M12 shaft with a flat on, and that of course fits onto the wheel, and attaches with that grub screw and the captive nut. And that's going to allow us to drive sideways, as well as being able to slide backwards and forwards, so that we can drive like a normal bike. We're going to need to actively balance though to steer and to stay upright, so I'm using an encoder on that motor which is something like 300 counts per revolution and it's just a normal quadrature encoder. It needs to fit on the back of the motor, but unfortunately the shaft on the motor isn't very long and there's nothing to really couple it with. The encoder doesn't take much to turn though, so I'm just going to use a piece of sticky tape. It's a bit of a dirty hack, but it should be okay to turn that encoder since it has hardly any resistance to rotary motion. 
I used two bits of sticky tape and some super glue and the encoder is glued down with some sticky tape as well and everything's quite flexible so hopefully it'll all stay in line. So you can see that encoder turns quite nicely when we turn the wheel and it's on the fast side of the gearbox so it's actually turning when the motor turns rather than when the wheel is turning that gives us far more resolution. So of course the chassis with the back wheel fits on the top and there's one extra plate that fits on the end there because that omni wheel is sticking out quite far from the motor so I've got another bearing and a plate just to support the other end. So now of course we can drive sideways to steer and to balance and we've got plenty of ground clearance there to do so and we can also drive backwards and forwards with the back wheel or use any of those motions at once to drive in all directions. So this is going to be quite weird to see when it's working because it's almost omnidirectional. But before we carry on with that, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is NordVPN. A VPN allows you to hide your IP address and location on the internet. You can also pretend to be somewhere else in the world, which allows you to do things like watch geolog streaming content. NordVPN is easy to use. You can connect with one click or enable auto-connect for zero-click protection. Find a server near you for better speed or in a faraway location for more content. NordVPN has lots of bandwidth so you can get amazing speed. It's confirmed by the speed tests. NordVPN is the fastest VPN out there. You can use up to six devices on every major platform, including Windows, Android, iOS, macOS and Linux. To get an exclusive NordVPN deal, go to nordvpn.com slash Bruton and I'll put that link in the description box as well. We're going to need some electronics to control this though, so I've got the good old Arduino Mega and two BTS7960 motor drivers and the NRF24L01 radio chip so I can use the OpenDog remote to control it. I'm using an MPU6050 inertial measurement unit and that's actually coupled to an Arduino Pro Mini that's sending serial data back to the Mega. I'm using Jeff Roberg's I2C devlib library which allows the MPU6050 to do motion processing on board and fuse all those sensors for us to give us a really accurate answer. However I've found on 5V Arduinos it's much more reliable to have an Arduino that does nothing but read the data and send it over serial rather than try to do everything at once which sometimes makes the data go crazy. I haven't quite got to the bottom of this yet but for now we're stuck with that extra serial link. I've also mounted a switch I can use for a motor enable and disable and a little pot that I can use to trim up the set point so we can make it balance perfectly. My back wheel is just driven by PWM and one of those motor drivers and I'm just driving that manually so that we can just drive back with some Fords and that's attached to one of my sticks and that's just going to drive like a normal bike. So first of all, for the balancing side to side wheel, I've put this into position mode so I'm using the encoder to position it with a PID controller and for now it's just attached to my manual stick for steering. So as I turn the stick, the position changes on the motor. This is going to be much better than just velocity control because the position will actually try and hold its position so if we update the position rather than try and change velocity it will spring back into the position we expect rather than actually trying to decelerate or accelerate. What we actually want is velocity control though but velocity is just a change in position over time so all I'm doing is updating the position on every loop of the code and now I can run a quite accurate velocity control. So now as I turn the stick it gets faster and slower but of course the motor will actually still try to hold its position and that gives us much more efficiency for lower powered brushed motors. My encoder is still holding on and that's on the fast end of the gearbox so it's turning with the motor rather than with the wheel. So now we just need to tune up another PID controller so it balances side to side just like a two wheel balancing robot but with only one wheel. And that's going to involve quite a bit of trial and error to try and get the parameters of P, I and D correct so it drives fast enough and also is damped enough that it can drive to catch itself and not overshoot and oscillate. And generally for balancing robots you want a really high I value, pretty much 10 times higher than your P value and quite a small D value for damping. So this is about the best I can get it to balance unfortunately, it's only just balancing. The main problem is that the Arduino Mega isn't quick enough to read the encoder with interrupts. I'm only using one interrupt with some code I found on the Arduino Playground website but with the encoder at 300 counts per revolution on the actual motor rather than the wheel I'm finding the Arduino is topping out which means the motor can't run at top speed and I've had to pull all the gains down on my PID controller to try and make it balance as best I can. Ideally it would be more aggressive but this is about the best I can do without topping out the motor which of course causes it to fall over. 
I added two batteries to the top, which aren't powering anything, they're just there as some ballast, so we've got more mass and a higher point of inertia, which means the top doesn't thrash around as much, and it's more stable. I can just about drive it, even though it's a bit shaky, and it's not too bad. I can drive around in circles while driving, and everything stays upright, and I can also turn on the spot of course just by driving that wheel sideways and balancing. Well, it looks a bit like a boat, and it drives a bit like a boat, wobbling in the sea as it goes, but it is in fact balancing, and I can drive and steer. It will actually go faster forwards and backwards, but if I drive too fast, it picks up a wobble like going too fast on a skateboard. So ideally, we'd need to dynamically retune the PID for balancing side to side as we increase velocity, but for now I haven't done so but I can seem to drive okay and steer in both directions and turn on the spot, which is quite useful for getting out of sticky situations where there's not enough space to drive and steer with a steering wheel like you'd have on a normal bike. Most of the balancing robots I made in the past use high power brushless motors controlled with a really accurate encoder and an O-Drive Robotics motor driver, and that meant we've got lots of torque at low speed and at high speed as well, and lots of overhead, and it's much easier to make the thing more stable just due to the extra power we had there and the ability to accelerate and decelerate. So I should probably make another version of this with a higher power brushless motor in that I can tune up as aggressively as I need to to make it balance more stably. It's all about if we had a bicycle, but the front wheel's on at 90 degrees and it's a big omni wheel. So then we can drive normally, just like the robot, backwards and forwards, and we can still probably steer with the handlebars so that we can balance normally like a normal bike. But then we can stop and slam the brakes on, turn on a switch that makes it balance side to side, and then we can just spin round on the spot, completely 180 or whatever, and then drive off again like a normal bicycle. At some point I'm going to try and build that in the future, so don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to. Now I'm going to publish all the CAD and code for this as open source, so if you'd like to have a look at it or try and build one that's better, you can. So if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, then those links are in the description as well. And patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early and sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up so you can see what's happening. Alright, that's all for now.